Thank you, right. everybody. Hello, floor. All right, so we'll call the uh, special select board meeting of January 5th, uh, 2022 to order. And then we'll, uh, we'll let you guys call your meeting to order next. And then we'll open up the, the we'll call, call a public hearing to order. We'll just go through and do some introductions. So uh, Berlin meetings, call to order. Call the school board meeting to order too. I have a point of clarification or just a question for you guys. Uh, are you guys keeping the minutes for everybody? Are yes. You? Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. Christy is here on the motion. John, John is just noted by me, mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, that we'll be voting. What's that? Virtual. I just uh, go through the introduction. Yeah. All right. So we'll, the public hearing is now in order. Uh, I'm Justin Lawrence, chairman of the Berlin Select Board. And we'll just let everybody here kind of go around and introduce themselves. To my right, Brad, we'll start with him. I'm Brad Town, uh, Select Board member. Tom Badowski, kind of Berlin. Florence Smith, secretary of the Select Board. Uh, Carolyn Luiso, chair of the Planning Commission, et cetera. <laughs> yep. And we've got town administrator. Vince Cotty, town administrator. And John Glenn will be joining us shortly, uh, remotely. That's all of us here this evening. We can we can go around too and introduce our, our, ourselves. Uh, okay, and now uh, Flor Diaz Smith, uh, chair of the school board, and I'm gonna pass it on to Carrie, our vice chair, and then Carrie pass it on to somebody else. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kari Bradley. I'm from Town of Callis. Uh, Diane, why don't you go next? Hi, Diane Nichols Fleming from Berlin. Um, Ursula. I'm Ursula Stanley. I'm from Middlesex. McKaylin. McKaylin LeClaire. I'm from Worcester. Uh, Jill. Jill Olson. I'm from Middlesex. I, I, now we're playing a game of memory. Uh, how about Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Jonathan Goddard. I'm the school board member from Berlin. And how about Maggie? Maggie Weiss. I'm a school board member from Tower. My last one. No, because I am Jonasino Van Fleet, a school board member from Worcester, and I will pass the con to Scott. Scott Thompson from McCallis, and I'll pass to Chris. Who is connecting to audio? <laughs> Maybe Lindy, go ahead and then move it to so that we can introduce Jen and Chris O'Brien too. Okay, I'm Lindy Johnson, uh, board member from East Montpelier. And with us, we have Jen, our superintendent. Jen, go ahead and then introduce. Hi, I'm Jen Miller Arsenault. I'm the interim superintendent, and we have two other members of our team here. So, Chris and Aaron, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Yeah, I'm uh, Chris O'Brien. I'm the director of facilities for the district. Hi, and I'm Aaron Boynton, the principal at Berlin Elementary School. Um, so, Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, we don't have any additions or changes to the agenda on our end. Um, anything you guys want to put out there for additions or changes immediately? No. Excellent. All right, so next up on the agenda, I have a, some presentation information um, as to where we're at, why, we're, why, we've, why we have to call this meeting. Um, I'm gonna defer mainly to, to Carla for this. She's very knowledgeable and has been working on this project for a very long time, has been very involved in it with the town. Um, are there, I guess my other quick question is, is there only, uh, Jonathan, were you the only Berlin school board member that was on there? Who's on there? Oh, Diane, you're on there, sorry. I just didn't see if everybody was in attendance. That's all from, from the town of Berlin, especially too. Just curious. 
Yeah, just that uh, Vera was not able to join us. She did send some input, but she's not able to join us. Okay. 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 Well, I'm sure we'll share that. Um, we'll let Carla take over with the presentation and we'll go from there. Thank you. Uh, hi. Um, I, I do want to thank everyone on the select board and the supervisor. Supervisory Union for the opportunity to meet and discuss the land gift. Um, I've been on the Planning Commission since 2011, um, chair for most of that time. I grew up in and currently live in Berlin. Um, during the day, I work at the Vermont Department of Financial Regulation, where I was an attorney for 10 years, recently became the Director of Market Regulation. Um, I, I, in preparation for this presentation, I did watch the school board meeting where this was briefly discussed. Um, and based on that meeting, I felt that there, the board really raised two questions. One was whether Berlin actually needed this parcel for the Newtown Center to move forward. And the other was what opportunities there were for public participation throughout this process. Um, so I tend to address those two questions tonight and of course answer questions as they arise. Um, but my hope is that I can adequately address your concerns um, because because uh, currently the matter is quite time sensitive. Um, there are a few projects that um, uh, I would say, you know, are hinge on this land gift. Um, and so in light of that, I, I did want to ask if you intended to vote tonight. It, that was not the information that was given to us. We Today, we are here for uh, a hearing with you guys and you're presenting to the town of Berlin and we're here to listen to your point of view and what the Berlin residents have to say about this project. We would be taking this at uh, our uh, January 19th meeting. It, the date that was given to us was February and today is an opportunity for everybody to hear about the, the, the project and ask questions but we are not making a decision. And that was part of the agenda. There were no decisions to be made tonight. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that information. I will, I guess I will attend your meeting then. I just, I guess the reason I ask is I worry that questions arise after the meeting and um, you know, there's no opportunity to answer those. So I was kind of hoping we could make a decision tonight, but I, I hear your point. Um, I first just wanted to make some preliminary comments regarding this gift because the, the discussions have been ongoing for some time. Um, and it's my understanding that they began in September of, or, or August of 2020. Um, and that, that there was in fact a board meeting in March of 2021 where this was discussed, um, that the former, board, former attorney actually approved or recommended approving the gift, um, but that the changes that occurred at the supervisor union essentially led to the decision not happening. So I, I just, I raise that only because this isn't a new topic. It has been something that's been being discussed for a while. Um, and, and I, so I, I, I guess I just wanna make sure that we, we all are on the same page in that regard. It's, it's, um, it's time to make a decision, I guess. Um, and I did wanna just give you some background on the new town center. I, I, I understand that a lot of you expressed support for the town center. Um, and sort of separated out the land issue, but I intend to show why they're in integral. But the, um, the concept of the town center has been a goal for this town for decades. Um, it, it was championed back in the 80s, I believe by Pat McDonald and the Economic Development Committee. In fact, the town center zoning district was created in the 1986 zoning regulations. So the work of creating this town center has been going on for a very long time. Um, the town actually began to explore the new town center designation, which is you know a separate issue, uh, with the state in, in earnest in 2016, we, we had a meeting with the ACCD regarding the the requirements for the new town center designation, and at that point um, we discovered that there was a lot of work to be done before we can even apply for the designation. So the vast majority of the work that the planning commission has engaged in for since 2016 has been in preparation for the town center. And I will go into more detail about what we had to do later. And I'm realizing that my, my outline is kind of out of order, but I, um, I, I'm gonna stick with the way, I, the way I've arranged it. Because I, I first will talk about the need for the, for the land. But I do want to address um, some comments that I sometimes hear about the town center that only benefits the mall. And I think it's really important for everyone to understand that um, the town chose this site. The town chose the mall site and the surrounding land back in the 80s. This is not something that the mall initiated. Um, and secondly, 
whatever benefits the mall, frankly, benefits the town. And so the fact that the mall benefits is, is secondary to the benefits that it brings to the town. And in fact, I would argue that we're lucky that the mall is committed to this project and to this redevelopment because many towns and cities uh, have vacant malls with no hope of redevelopment. So we, I feel like we're in a lucky position. Um, the new town center designation offers various benefits to developers, such as permit relief and funding priorities, and to the town, uh, also funding priorities for municipal grants and the opportunity to create a TIF district. But in my opinion, one of the biggest benefits to the town is the ability to better control the pattern and the form of development, which is to say we can better direct how that land gets used um, through the use of zoning uh, regulations. So first question, does the town need this land? Well, uh, the short answer is yes. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the, this new town center application, we began in 2020. It's been an extensive process. Um, it was a very collaborative process, including collaboration with the mall, the hospital, the other landowners, the supervisor, the union superintendent was involved, um, and all in state agencies such as ACCD, ANR, and the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Um, the concept plan has evolved over time. Um, it was challenging due to the legal and natural constraints of the site. There's extensive wetlands and that's made it particularly challenging, even though it has been stated that the wetlands are compromised and that the project will likely improve their functionality. Um, but we still have to be cognizant of those wetlands and try to work around them. Um, but the plan has always included this gateway to route six at route 62, which, um, with development shown on both sides of, of the road, so to speak, including on the school land. And that's the reason that the town began the conversations with the supervisory union back in August of 2020, is because of this concept plan and the fact that it was integral to the new town center designation. Yep. <laughs> um, and I just wanna to touch a little bit on, on what I'm gonna call the contentious nature of this decision. Um, or did you want to talk, Justin? No, I just want to know if you want to, like, after you went over that, if you wanted to see if they had any questions. Well, I will at the end phase. of my little thing oh, here. sorry, I was going to go phase no. by phase and slow it down. But, That's all right. Um, and and I, I raised this, there, there was a lot of animosity when the mall was built in the 1980s. There was a lot of opposition. And I have to say that it appeared that some of that remained when we went through this application process with the state. There were certain um, entities and that were not in favor of this um, development. Um, and so, so, so throughout the process, we received some mixed signals from the state. And I think a lot of it had to do with differing opinions from differing agencies. And I only raise this because um, this decision was hard fought and wrought with compromise. And any variation in the proposal will be detrimental to the future of the designation. Um, the conversations that we've had with the state since the conditional approval, they have asked every time if we have gotten the land gift approved. Uh, so it's it, to them, this is uh, a big piece of the designation. The housing proposal, I think, was key to us getting it. The Fox Run uh, project was, and the, and the prospect for having that housing project built was a big factor in getting this approved. And that whole gateway concept and the block form at that end of the, of the development was, was key to the decision. So... Uh, the answer, my answer to your question of is this necessary is yes. Um, I do believe the future of the designation would be in jeopardy if we do not develop it the way we proposed in the concept plan. Um, so I guess I'll pause there. I, I just wanted to add that prior to the merger, uh, the town had discussed and, and knew that this would probably be a relevant piece for the development of that property. And we had concerns that something like this may arise. Um, so, so while we did approach the board, what was it, 2020? Yes. That was when it became a, to the point where we had to approach the board. We knew this was going to be ongoing from, from the start, and we wanted to address it earlier, but because of the time frames, we weren't able to, and this is when it really impacted the application. It was basically when we started the application, yeah. So that's when, so, yeah. Um, yeah. And I apologize. I had intended to have Bonnie Wanager's um, comment. We, we invited Bonnie and um, Eileen He from the mall, to, uh, from the hospital, to give some comments, and I intended to let them speak before I jumped into my presentation. So I do want to just pause and allow them to make their comments. Bonnie, did you want to go first?
Uh oh. Uh oh. Can, can you hear me? Oh, great. You yeah. heard? Absolutely. Oh, got it. <laughs> try the camera again. I love technology. There you go. Thank you so much. I just wanted to weigh in from a regional perspective, if I could. Um, the Regional Planning Commission, for those of you who don't know, we serve 23 municipalities in central Vermont, and Berlin is one of those communities. And as we've uh, worked with the town on this project and tried to move it through the state process, you know, our Board of Commissioners, which represents Berlin and all the other towns, has been very excited to see the potential for that kind of infill development in Berlin um, to bring housing if you've tried to purchase or rent or home lately, you know that it's high cost and low availability. So anything we can do to help um, move this process forward and help create homes for people, I think it's something I just want you to know is important to all the communities. If the housing happens in Berlin, they're excited and they're excited if it happens in their own communities as well. Um, it's also for us, we see it as an economic and community development opportunity for the region. Um, we've got some core centers in Montpelier, in Northfield, in Barrie. For Berlin, we've got some development there, but if we could increase its density, basically by increasing the density, your, your value of development goes up. And it means that more people will come to those areas, more people will shop, will live, um, hopefully contribute to the economy locally. Um, it means jobs for people. The hospital is there. I'll link it back to housing. You guys know that. The hospital's having difficulty as are other employers in, it's not just, it's a workforce issue, I guess is what I'll say, that um, people need places to live. When you try and hire someone, whether they're coming from out of town, out of region, or just need to change their home, um, they're having a hard time finding it. And the more we can do to bring homes to central Vermont, the more our economy will move forward rather than stay stagnant. And I say stagnant because for every job we gain, we seem to lose one. And bringing development together where companies can feed off of each other, they can work together, um, they can recruit employees together, having them in one place having the housing next to it, the medical facilities, the shopping, that tends to make employers excited because they can attract employees better. So I'm, I would just like to encourage you all to continue working together on this. Um, it's important regionally as well as it's important locally. And I will stop there because I know many other people would like to speak. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, thank you Bonnie. Eileen, did you want to say a few words? I would love to. So <laughs> I'm Eileen He. I'm the Director of Projects and Properties at the Central Vermont Medical Center. And we've been actively working on the new town center project with the town of Berlin since June of 2020. And we're really excited about the redevelopment of the area and the creation of a place where people can live, work, and recreate. I think the new town center plan really shows a possibility for all that to happen in a concentrated area. And you may or may not know that our hospital for a period of time was in the new town center just, uh, designated area and it no longer is, but we remain committed to the project and the success of it because we really feel that it's gonna benefit the community as a whole, our staff and patients, the town of Berlin and our organization. So yes, as Bonnie just said, one of the key elements of this is housing and affordable housing is really key for us to be able to fulfill our mission to provide health care to the community of central Vermont. So the lack of local housing for us is a recruitment constraint. And it's an issue from the physician level all the way to the service level, but we feel it most acutely at the service level. We have an environmental services department that we've been unable to fully staff for four years. And this is true, meant all of our service level departments are understaffed. And while it's a workforce issue, it's also a housing issue. 
Um, you might have seen Phil Scott and Bernie Sanders on the state house steps earlier this week talking about the dire nursing shortage in central in the state of Vermont. And that's one of our other recruiting challenges. Over the past few years, we've been expanding our educational opportunities and licensure programs in partnership with local colleges, but without affordable housing, we're going to have a difficult time retaining those people. So, um, you know, I can share a couple of just brief stories from the past couple of weeks that I encountered. One was we hired a uh, non-healthcare emerging professional to the hospital and she is electing to live in Williston and commute to central Vermont because she could not find housing locally that suited her needs. She moved from out of state. A lot of the housing that we have in central Vermont isn't necessarily what you'd find typically in other urban and suburban areas. So she was she was looking for something well lit, a multi-unit place, and she couldn't find it, a place where she felt truly safe. So I can only imagine that in six months or a year, she's going to find a job in Chittenden County and she's going to relocate, you know, she's going to remain there and work there. We had a nurse who we were onboarding and the local, the company that was assisting with recruitment could only find her a place over a garage and she didn't feel like that was suitable housing. So while those examples are about a specific type of housing, I think we all know that there's a real need for housing in central Vermont. So in closing, I'll just say that, um, you know, we're striving to meet the healthcare needs of central Vermont and we're in strong support of the Berlin Town Center designation and the positive impacts it can have for, real, for the future vibrancy of the community. Thank you. I just have a little bit more that I'm going to finish up with, and then I think we we do public comment. Uh, we'll do uh, public discussion with the board, okay. and then we'll open it up to public comment. Okay. So I just want to I just want to give you a sense of how we got here, right. what what we did to get to this point. Um, so Berlin had to completely rewrite its zoning bylaws in anticipation of the new town center, um, and during the, that that process lasted several years, um, and 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 included a total of uh, sixty five meetings. Um, Berlin had to revise its town plan to specifically state the intention to seek a new town center designation. That process involved 53 meetings. Um, the new town center application development process was, I guess it wasn't a whole year, it was close to a year. Um, we had, there, that involved um, 48 planning commission meetings and, and 16 select board hearing meetings. And in each case, not only did we have these numerous public hearings, public meetings where we took input, but we but these meetings had to be uh, there was specific public hearings de dedicated to each of those topics, and they, they had to be approved by the select board, and the town had to vote on each of those uh, items. So there was significant public participation. Secondly, um, Berlin invested a significant amount in infrastructure, all of which had to be bonded and voted on by the voters. So I think the the public support has been shown throughout for the for the for this project and um, in in turn for this development at that end of the site. Um, and, and I also want to talk a little bit about the momentum that we currently have because there's a lot going on. Um, Chestnut Place is near completion. It's planned to open in April of 2022. Fox Run is currently in the pro the housing project is currently in the process of seeking permits. Uh, there's a Starbucks that is um, currently in the process of seeking permits, and it's it's important to note that both Fox Run and Starbucks are at the Route 62 end of the project, and they have they have designed those plans to fit the concept plan. And I think that's important because when you have to understand that that is just a concept plan, but the mall is a committed partner and they have, they made sure that those projects met the requirements of the town center designation so that we would not jeopardize that. And they, so they've, they've been a, a great partner. Um, Berlin has secured funding for a number of projects, $500,000 to realign and upgrade route 62, um, 
Uh oh, Tom, I didn't put the numbers in on the stormwater. Uh, 160,000. 160,000 for stormwater. Um, so that the, so that the we can look at the combined stormwater needs for the entire project, which includes the mall, the, the car dealers, and the hospital. So that's all being looked at in conjunction. Um, there's a multi-use of forty thousand dollars to look at the multi-use path on the perimeter of the site. Eighty thousand is it eighty for the road Fisher Road? Hundred thousand. Hundred thousand dollars to look at a road diet for Fisher Road um, to make that a more pedestrian friendly um, road, so that it, it creates that that town center feel. And and even though the, the the hospital may not come back into the town center, it would allow those connections across the road to the hospital. Um, and, and, and one of the important things for this, this actual site is Berlin has applied for um, an MVP fitness court, which is uh, MVP is looking to put fitness courts in, I think, 20 towns around the state. Um, and we were, I think, one of the first ones to put in an application. And we believe we secured matching funding for that. And, and we would intend to, we would hope to put it on this site um, as a, for the town, for the residents of Berlin or uh, or, or others to use. And Green Mountain Community Fitness is, wants to partner with us to program um, and, and help with the use of that facility. Um, and they've suggested expanding and, and putting in pickleball courts um, and things of that nature for the town to use. So, so going back to the, to the gift, you know, I know that there's, there was talk at the meeting of, you know, of restricting it. You know, if you want to restrict it for municipal purposes, I don't think we have an issue with that. It's the option agreement that was put up, that was created earlier. Um, and we, we fully intend to use that for recreational and municipal purposes. So um, I think that's pretty much all I had to say. I, I did want to just, I'm not sure what Vera's input was, but if it, I know that Vera raised the issue at the last meeting of comments and you said she gave input to you and I'm, I don't know if that's something that you're going to share. So it, first, it, I, I want to just clarify a couple, a couple of things. In I'm looking at Vince, but I can't find it. I had it right on my, but I, it is, it, it, it's a little different that what I was, at least what we had agreed in hoping for today's, uh, today's meeting, right? It, the, today's meeting to me is not about convincing the board or it's not because we've been trying to pull you up. You know, we, we wanna make sure that there is community support for this. So this was an opportunity for both of us to put, I thought Tom was gonna present the, the, the plans again today so that community members from Berlin had a chance to, to give us both the select board and the school board their input. So before jumping into talking back and forth with the board, we wanna hear from the community in, in Berlin. That's what's the most important to, to us. Well, I think what I was trying to tell you is that we have been listening to the town of Berlin for five years, and I'm happy to have anybody on this, this, this um, meeting speak. I would love to hear from Berlin, but I guess what I'm trying to say is that is that this process has been ongoing. That was the point of me discussing it. So I hear what you're saying, but I but I think that you need to understand that this didn't just happen, and it's oh, we, we've been receiving input throughout. Yeah, that we are not questioning your process. We we wanna you know we we wanna do what is best for the town of Berlin and for the school uh, for the district of Washington Central, right? For 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 the kids, we wanna do what is responsible thing to do. So this is an opportunity. So if we uh, you know let's Sorry. let's keep going. So I'll wait to uh, when we are in board discussion at the end of the meeting, as we had said, uh, I can share Vera, Vera's input. Okay, thank right. you. So I think I think really what we just want to ensure is that that the school board understands what, what, what kind of efforts the town's put into it, where the town's at. I think there's probably some uh, either breakdown in not communication, but we, we just want to make sure we're both on the same page and understanding what, what each other each party needs uh, to make an informed decision, as you said, and move forward. Um, so you're right, it is about the public comment. It is about getting this information out there. Um, as far as sharing the, uh, you know, the town plans, things like that, that you, you were assuming Tom was going to share, um, we can share those. We've shared them a bunch there. I, it looks like there's a few Berlin residents that, that I see on here. Um, and, and I'm not sure, uh, we'll have a quick board discussion about this and then we'll open it up to public comment. But if we want to go through and share 
I mean, how long is the presentation for the, the concept that you had? I, I, you can just, well, I just bring it up and we'll go right through it. I mean, I, I don't know if did, did any of the Berlin residents that are on there now have any specific questions in reference to the, the concept of the town center. Have you seen it? Have you participated in any of the meetings? Any of that? Any, any Berlin resident can feel free to speak up. I have a question. Here, sure. go ahead. Um, nuts and bolts. Um, what is the size of the gift parcel? It depends on depends on how we looked at it. We had we had expressed two different options, um, and one was what three and a half acres, and one was seven. I believe was was the number seven. Right? Yeah, seven point four acres was included. Uh, uh, some wetlands. The if you exclude the wetlands, it's three point eight acres. Three point eight and seven point four, Peter. Which is either, either one is we're amenable to, to either one. The three point eight is fine. Right. Go ahead, Peter. What would be the uh, the impact on the elementary school? It would. It, there. I mean, I'm not going to say there wouldn't be any because I can't speak from the elementary school's perspective. So we'll probably let them speak to that briefly. From from the, I think the Berlin Town perspective, it would be only property on the mall side of the wetlands. I think the, the positive impacts would be the things like the potential pickleball court, the MVP fit, the, all of the outdoor recreation that we would be putting in there, along with a potential partnership to maybe make those like more eco-friendly paths down yes. there. Uh, from I don't see a negative impact, but I can't from the town's perspective to the school. I see it. I see a lot of positive, honestly. And as a, I went there, I was an elementary school student there. I've lived here my whole life. My dad, you know, Peter, my dad was on this board. Yeah. Uh, I see it as, as tremendous potential for both the Berlin school community as well as the Berlin residents. But I don't know if maybe Floor can speak to what they see as the potential uh, impact to the school on that. Or somebody from the Berlin or from the supervisory union. That would be great. Thank you. Can I respond to that, Justin? I just well, I, yeah, absolutely. I, I want to be very clear. I'm not, I am in support of the town plan concept. I think a lot of work has been done over a long period of time. And um, uh, I haven't been involved with the school board for a while, but when I was last, we uh, authorized a tentative. Uh, proposal of a small portion in order to make uh, a housing project happen. So I recognize that that there has to be or there, there, there should be some give and take to, to make the overall project feasible. <clears throat> I do want to make sure uh, that the, that the school is not negatively impacted. And I'd also like to point out that the property that we're talking about <clears throat> is property that was a gift to the school for school purposes at the outset. Um, and so it's important to me uh, from a history standpoint that we all recognize that whatever land <clears throat> that now belongs to the school, whether it's the, the town and the school or the unified school district, uh, it was a gift from Clarence Pike to the school for school purposes. So we should all be careful of how we treat it. Thank you for Thank that. Thank you for that here. point, Peter. I appreciate that. This, this, I guess to answer the Berlin residents question, would somebody from the school board like to speak on how they could see that would potentially impact the school? I, I think our main interest is exactly what uh, Peter was saying right now is that the, you know that we listen to the to the residents. What we can see is that if we had to expand, for example, the, it's the only place where we could have parking. But we're today here not uh, you know it's not necessarily prepared to talk about all of that. I hope was that we would hear exactly this so that we could really assess it, what we heard from all of the. Berlin town uh, residents uh, okay. in uh, that that is our our our, our hope and okay. then please any board member you know or uh, Jen or Aaron 
if you guys want to jump in, but I, I think that's that's what I had informed my board on. You know, we want to hear how residents feel about this piece of property and uh, and how it impacts the town, the town center. Okay, go ahead, Tom. Tom would like to say. I, I, I think a positive impact. You know, we spoke about this before. Floor is we're estimating when we build the residential community out this neighborhood. There's a likelihood of 40 to 80 students uh, that would attend Berlin Elementary School, and and in today's environment, uh, that's just a huge win for for the school. So uh, I, it, I think it's a win-win for both the town and and the school. <laughs> Does uh, any other Berlin residents that are on this meeting would they care to share their comments? I, I noticed. I think I saw Bob Warnick on there. He might he might have something to say. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I apologize, apologize for that. I always have something to say. <laughs> um, I, I've been chairman of the development review board now for twenty years. Um, uh, this 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 project is intriguing. I do think a transfer of this land is necessary to achieve the objectives of a town center. Uh, without being able to realign the road, without being able to accomplish a, uh, a, a reasonable type of entrance to this uh, town center project, uh, I think we'll lose it. So uh, I, I have no stake in it per se. Uh, that's just my observation as having reviewed many applications in this town over the last 20 years. Uh, and I think this is very necessary. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Any other Berlin residents on there that would like to share? Oh, Hello. Florence Smith would like to share a comment. <laughs> as a member of the board, but also as a town resident, I've lived in the town for just over 27 years. Both of my daughters attended Berlin Elementary. And I know many Berlin residents that are huge proponent of the school and the town and are supportive of this process. I think it will be a huge benefit to all residents, but also to the students and the recreation aspect along with our town center. It's just a very integral process. And I like what you said, Peter. I think we do need to pay close attention, but I think this would be in keeping with what's good for the whole community as a whole. Thank you. Hi, um, I'll show my face for a second here. Um, <laughs> here. Hi. I'm uh, Tony Snow. I am a Berlin resident. I am also an educator uh, in the town of Bethel. Um, and I also uniquely am uh, part of the um, planning commission, but I also have a background in transportation planning. Uh, I used to do transportation planning for the state of California and review state routes to schools. Um, I know that in the very least, the ability to redesign the road is incredibly important for safety, um, thinking of the number of potential future students living in this community. Uh, it's incredibly important to make sure that we have a, a safe uh, environment for these uh, future students to be able to get to the school and to be able to have a safe environment for them to live in. And realigning this road is going to be a part of that. I have uh, previously examined many applications for safe routes to schools for this exact thing. Um, and typically, um, it's, it's something that um, when I would get those applications, it's, it's because it's too late and, and people have already been uh, injured by not having safe roads. Um, so I, I think it's really important that this community has taken this step ahead of time uh, to ensure that this is a, a safe community um, for all these future residents. Also, as an educator uh, in Bethel, we have an incredibly close relationship as a school with the town of Bethel. And we, um, as a school, view the town as being the expanded learning uh, and the expanded classroom for our school. And I think this is a really wonderful opportunity for the students uh, in Berlin Elementary School or any other students who are visiting the campus to be able to uh, have easy access and have uh, a, a, a community that they're able to easily explore and expand um, their learning environment. Um, so as a Berlin resident, I'm completely in, in support and in favor of this 
Thank you. Uh, are there any other Berlin residents that, that haven't spoken that are on on tonight that that maybe aren't familiar with this? You know, I know Floor, you you mentioned that you wanted you thought Tom was going to go through this presentation. He was going to share with the community this concept. We've done this honestly a, a multitude of times, and I feel like we can do it again if the school board doesn't completely understand this concept but it sounded like the school board did as well be ha we'll be happy to share it again that way but but I, I i think that every berlin resident that's in attendance here tonight has seen this concept time and time again um and maybe maybe little things have tweaked over the the 20 30 plus years that this town center's been been being planned obviously um and so that's just just part of the way a project evolves but is there any Berlin resident on here um, since we're holding this hearing for Berlin residents in their best interest that has not seen or understand the drawings or the concepts of this Berlin town center so that we can share it with you and help you better understand it? So I'm, I'm both a board member and also, you know, a, a resident. Okay. Um, I guess my, my concern or my question and again I've lived here since um, you know 91 and so we have been part of those town meetings and those great discussions and we absolutely support that need for a town center I absolutely support affordable housing absolutely support the need for diverse housing and the ability for people to um, access services and to walk to places my question continues to be and um, that while yes, we've had these different concepts out there that I'm just, you know, I, I just don't know when this exact plan, which also might end up tweaked and I get that, but when this exact plan was rolled out to residents, that's all my question is because um, it's, it's easy to use different language and we all have different pictures. And so right. again, okay. repeatedly, not to be contentious or to be argumentative, no, but not at all. this exact plan, I don't know that it's been out there. And I know that COVID is a big impact of that. So, so it's just wondering how do we get this spread out there for all? I just, yeah, I just want to speak to that real quick and, and Tom or Carla, they'll, I'll let them answer it. What I do know um, as well as that when we did our, our town center application, right. Um, and, and everybody that was involved in that town center, this was part of the concept, everybody that was involved in the town center planning and with that application, including the supervisory union signed off saying they supported it. And so it's been, been in effect, uh, since the beginning of this town center designation application. And at that time that included the school board support, for that road and that being done, set up the way it is. Um, so it's been a significant amount of time and it's been shared a bunch, but I'll let Tom add to that if you would like. I, you know, I, I don't know if David Delcor is on this call, but he's the, the, the reporter from the Times Argus. Uh, there's been numerous uh, uh, articles in the Times Argus. The, many of these pictures that you see now were in the Times Argus. The, the, really the first time that the, the, a drawing concept that the planning commission saw was in june of 2020 uh we shared that uh, i shared it with the former uh, superintendent of schools in, in august of, of 2020 because it included this this school parcel and uh and we, we were we were asking for the starting to ask for the gift then uh, so, so it's it's been out in the public realm for close to two years now. And, and I'll go back to saying the fact that we knew that this may be a potential issue with the Act 46 merger where the, the land got assigned out. I mean, the land, as I think Peter Schober mentioned, was gifted to the community um, for the school purposes. It was municipal property. As part of the Act 46, we, we, were, we were forced to 
or whatever, got assigned to the supervisory union. We knew at that point in time that this potential issue was coming about. We, we as the town still, I think, had done, done a fair amount of investment with stormwater runoff with, with that property. Uh, I think that the town has contributed tremendously. I mean, I don't, I don't think the school itself paid a bill for the stormwater runoff project that we did over there, and the town, town helped with that. I think we as the town have shown and participated a bunch throughout time that that we're willing part we're willing partners. We want to do what's best for the Berlin community, the Berlin schools, the you know everybody in the supervisory union, um, and and this would just continue along with with the precedents that we've already set as being you know. Uh, partners in the community. Now, I know, I know that that doesn't say that there's not unanswered questions or that this concept changed a little bit over time or Diane, you were wondering when exactly it came out. It was 2020 um, that, that this plan got approved. I think that it's, it's important to understand that, that, that it's a vital piece of it um, and that it, it does have a tremendous amount of community support. Not everybody loves the concept. Not everybody's perfectly happy with it. Probably I'm assuming, I don't know. Um, but, but it is a, a vital piece and it. The intention of the land is to, to better serve the community in the town. Um, any other public con does that address your concern, Diane? Does that address your question? Do you have any follow-up as a result of that? Okay, so, so when when I was Corinne just put a comment on the and and I think I, I agree with that that maybe because this is being recorded it would be nice for for people to to see what the to show the school and show the road. Okay. Yeah, I can't see the chat. I see it there's and one. And then and then take out the 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 presentation so that we can see each other after that. I so it's important to have the so can you go to the, the, the road? This is the existing road. You can, uh, you can see my cursor. Can, can people on the audience see my cursor? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's the existing road as the entrance off of 62. Uh, the, the town of Berlin has received a $500,000 grant to realign the road like this, making a traffic calming out of this road. There'll be sidewalks throughout this whole area. There is a, uh, we are in a process of developing a multi-use path, which is this purple line here. Um, and um, so that's, uh, that's, what the real line road would look like. It had become a T intersection in an effort to slow traffic. There'll be parking on the road in front of these uh, housing buildings here. And Walmart is just off the screen right here. The school is, uh, you're going to be able to see this. Can you scroll out a little bit? Yeah, the the school is up across these wetlands up here. <clears throat> So is any of the, none of this, 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 even the seven point, what was it? 7.4 acres. If that's all, is that all on the uh, town center side of the wetlands or the stream that yeah, runs I, through I think there? I have that Justin here. Let me have it here. This may be, maybe the visualization that you were you're more looking for. Um, Tom, yeah, go ahead. And... So, so the school is here. Yep. The the existing road is, as I showed there, the the road alignment would come out like this, and then down like this. The the town has a um, a desire to consider uh, building a municipal facility here with recreational courts and likely some uh, second or third floor housing. Um, so, but that's, this is what the project looks like today. 
The, the Fox Run folks, um, there are, it's a 40 unit housing complex, 30 unit housing complex being permitted right here. There's a, a restaurant being permitted here. Um, when the gift would occur, it would create another lot here, which we see about 50 units of housing being on, on that section as well. Um, I can't stress how important the this gift of land is. Um, it, um, it's, it's in all likelihood, if, if this gift doesn't happen, the, the town center project would, would likely uh, dissolve and none of this would come to fruition. Um, so this, we are at a critical junction. Um, we do, uh, we, I know there's folks on the call from Fox Run, the, the, the workforce housing projects that's being developed. If you'd like to hear from them about the, the critical need, I think they'd be more than welcome to talk, uh, but, but I don't wanna take your agenda tonight. Um, I think one of the things that that maybe maybe Carla could speak to a little bit better that I wanted to, to mention was that part of this application as well uh, for the town center includes municipal structures, buildings, uh, offices over there. Um, so so we need to do something with the property. And, and while we may have the option to lease a space or, or something from a, a, a potential developer over there. I don't, I don't know that the town really wants to become a tenant. I, I don't think that I, I would much prefer to own property. And I think the town would too, when they, they do a building, but I don't know if there's anything more you'd want to add to that or not. Well, I, I will just add, because I know there was a conversation at the last meeting about the potential of leasing us or being in the mall, and that is no longer an option. So um, I do think that our first and, you know, most the most preferable option would be to have a building on that site and to create so that we can create um, this gateway, this sort of unique aspect, some kind of a unique building on the corner that says here, you know, you've arrived in Berlin um, or in Berlin town center. So, so it is, it is a, an important piece of the, the gateway, which I referred to earlier, but it is specifically the municipal, the municipal building that I was speaking of and this sort of announcement that you've arrived. So I, I think one of the comments John Jonathan Goddard just put up there that there would be a continuous amount of traffic going through there. Is that that right, John? Is that a concern of yours? Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, just looking at the the alignment that was presented or the realignment, the, you know, where where does that traffic so, come out? It comes out in the mall in front of um, Walmart. So it actually doesn't come out in front of Walmart the way the road continues through around Walmart, that there's part of an internal restructure there. But part of that road, if you think about it, the, the, I, I think you have a great point because that road that goes through there now, you visualize very differently. Uh, people tend to, to rip through there. They fly through there. They're not always perfectly safe. Uh, and, and the design with this road, part of the reason why we need that is for public safety. So by having that road set up the way it is right now, people tend to go faster. They'll go through there. I could see if you had housing there and people crossing, it wouldn't be necessarily pedestrian friendly. It could be relatively dangerous. By adding this concept with this 90 degree turn, which the state wants, um, that will slow traffic down, make it much more pedestrian friendly, walk friendly. Uh, it, it, it'll actually accomplish and eliminate the issues. There, there may be a high volume of traffic, but it'll actually make it a, a walkable sidewalks. It'll make it so that you can get across the intersection, slowing traffic down. The whole purpose of this restructuring mm -hmm. is to help eliminate and make yes. it safer than it already is for that matter. Go ahead, Tom. Justin, I'd like to just share another uh, uh, screen here that I think may talk, speak to Jonathan's concerns. I can find it. Yeah, it's just a, it's a pretty small, but um, so Jonathan, we we're talking about this road. You get to hopefully still see my cursor. Uh, it comes in, and and so that the road will will be built on the back end of the Berlin Mall parking lot, and there's additional development down in this section, and this road will then come out to Fisher Road this way. 
So uh, this would become a uh, once developed a, a town street, and these there these structures here and here are redesigned to really slow traffic down in the mall itself um, and keep traffic on the back end of that parking lot out the Fisher Road. So um, I, I have a quick question if you don't mind, Tom. So so on that on that rear road you're talking about, is that going to be one way only? And you're not going to be when you're at number three on your little map there coming into the mall uh, on on the I guess it would be the west side. Jonathan, it's two way traffic. Okay, so it's not one way. Correct. Okay. Um, is the um, explain that in front of the mall that road goes away? Yeah, this the the current the current road, as Brad mentioned, comes here out in front of. The, front of the, the mall uh it, it that that road is not safe for people who want to get into the into shop in here so uh, the, the mall management really is embracing this uh, on the rear side of the parking lot that's how development redevelopment of malls are occurring now so it allows for much safer foot traffic for customers coming uh, in and out of the, the the shopping at the mall, I think I think what's important and a lot of thought has been put into this concept, and it is around making the whole point of this town center is it needs to be pedestrian friendly and safe. Um, so even with the state looking at the concept of these additional housing developments, the, the potential for these businesses, any additional influx or flow of traffic. The way that the way the road design has been done was to actually increase safety uh, and make it more pedestrian and, and bike bike path friendly. So, so so, so it's a I, I just had another. Can I have a, can I just have another quick question here, just very quickly? Absolutely. So if I'm if I'm if I'm clear as to what you're saying, it's going to be fully pedestrian in front of directly in front of the ball where the parking lot is. There's going to be no cars driving along the front of the building anymore. Is that what you're saying? That, no, Jonathan. I, that that would be a misrepresentation. Right. But they, the, I, I think you'll see the dramatically the the traffic through that will will be will be less. Um, again, that's it's, it's a functionality of the of the what's in the mall and in their space, but. Uh, it, 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 will, it will not completely eliminate any traffic. At least not in the near future. Yeah. Hopefully eventually. Yep. It will become. Any other, any other questions, John, anybody else, any other concerns? Floor, did that, did that, do you think that that met the, the, the sharing criteria that you were looking for? Sorry, I was muted. Yes. Yeah. I wanted the. It, you okay. know, and hear from more Berlin residents uh, too. There's more residents on there though. Oh, I'm Andrea Chandler. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. well, yeah, Andrea. Well. Thanks Thank for you, joining. Andrea. Yeah. Um, I'm in support of this. I've been watching it in the newspaper and going to some meetings. And I was on the Conservation Commission in Berlin for many years. And I like the consolidation of services. and. It's on a bus line. It's um, going to have. It's going to be so much easier for Berlin residents to access so many different things. And the housing point is from both the regional planners and the hospital. You know that's again a very important asset for the the whole Central Vermont area. So. I'll, I'm fully in support of the whole project. Thank you for your work. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you all. <clears throat> Any other Berlin residents want to speak? We got, I don't, I don't want to individually call people out oh, if they want really to don't want out. to talk. I was going to start calling people out, but I guess I won't. <laughs> <laughs> you can call me out if you want. I, I called you, I was going to call you out, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Randy Herring. I've been a lifetime uh, resident of Berlin. 
And this concept has been around for a long time. And to see it to come to fruition would be an amazing event for Berlin, not only just for the town center, but for all the residents, because maybe then we could have our own post office. Yay! <laughs> but that's, that's one thing that we've always needed and we still need. So I appreciate all the work that's been gone into this. And I really hope that it goes forward. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Any other Berlin? Thank you. Any other Berlin? I did not plant him in the audience, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's okay if I was to talk on behalf of Fox Run. Sure. Sure, go ahead. So, hi, I'm Nicola Anderson. I'm the Director of Real Estate Development for Downstreet Housing and Community Development. You know, I, um, I just wanted to join today to reiterate and to state how important this truly is for our housing project and for the new town center. You know, if this um, can occur, there's an opportunity to create a safe walkway for kids to get to school so that they do not, so there's no risk of them walking along that highway. That is key and also another part that is gonna make this so much more pedestrian friendly, even though the new town center everything about this is gonna make it so much more pedestrian friendly. Um, it is also just to state um, our housing project truly really will only happen if um, we do get new town center designation. That is one of the conditions of our funding. One of the conditions of the funding is also, we will not receive that 500,000 for the road without the new town center designation. Um, so this is truly, really important for all of the pieces of the puzzle to come together. I think that um, we're so excited to bring this housing project to Berlin, the opportunity that that's going to create and all of the other projects that are going to follow this. It's really going to make Berlin thrive, but it's so valuable and so important. And I know how much Berlin needs this. Uh, Downstreet has been working on this project since 2019. And we are, if we can make this happen, we are gonna break at ground on this project this summer and we will be able to start housing people next summer. Um, so again, like this is truly, really important. I only see positives out of this land swap happening. Um, and I just am really excited for the opportunity for Berlin. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And I think it's important also to remember that uh, you're not only it's not only the benefits to the town of Berlin, but it's also the benefits to the surrounding communities through better services and uh, access to services. Good point, Brad. Thank you. And I also wanted to add in terms of the safety element that Nicholas spoke to just a few minutes ago and others have, have indicated is the fact that there will be better lighting in the town that's part of the town center. And with better lighting, you have additional safety. And I think we all can wrap our heads around the need for additional safety. It goes, goes without a doubt. Thank you. Yeah, street lights are required on that street. And we've seen a plan where they're every 50 feet, so it's definitely be good lighting. I think that will be extremely beneficial overall. Do, do we have any additional public comment? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to speak quickly um, as, as <laughs> Uh, fairly new to town. Uh, I am on the select board, but I have children in the Berlin school as well. Um, I started out as a skeptic of the, the project, knowing how big it was and knowing kind of the timeline and how overall government projects uh, work and how long they can potentially take. So, you know, I looked at this from a lot of different angles and I, I truly don't believe that it hurts uh, the Berlin Elementary School or the the conditions of the land and, and what the children have now or even or even in the future um, as far as recreational opportunities given where the land is um, and and you know when you look at um, potentially giving that up and, and what we can receive um, from a community standpoint I think not only will it help uh, the town um, from a from a downtown perspective, but it'll make a stronger community, which makes a stronger school and a better school. 
Thank you, John. Thanks, Thank John. you. I'd, I'd actually like to make a comment as a resident as well. Um, and, and from my perspective, it, it might be a little bit different. I went to elementary school there. Both my children went to elementary school there. Um, I was on the school board for a short time there as well. Uh, I, I have huge sense of pride in the community. Um, I think that the, the, if, if this were to, if this land gift did not occur, uh, it would be very unfortunate for the residents and of the town of Berlin, as well as the school. I think that that it would potentially cost the taxpayers a tremendous amount of money. As Brad said, it would maybe reduce the potential for services that we needed. Uh, it, it, it would potentially just be it would be devastating all the hard work and infrastructure that we put into it and the and the, the the community involvement and backing that we had would it i would hate to feel as though uh a, a board from this is just me as a resident a board of of directors from outside communities would have the ability to impact our town so tremendously um so i i hope as a resident that when, when you guys make your decision, you look at it and truly what's best for the Berlin community and, and, and the school. And I don't think that if you look at it from that perspective with any bias put aside, I, I really don't feel as though you will see any downfall or negative impact to either one of them. And if they are, the pros will certainly outweigh the cons tremendously. So that's, that's what I have to say as a resident. Any other Berlin residents, uh, any other public comment as far as this is concerned? All right, um, so we'll, we'll close the public hearing and uh, we'll, we'll have a discussion as boards. Um, so I guess to, to hear, hear from the school board, um, you, you have intentions to take this up on your January 19th agenda, is that correct? Uh, yes, and, and I, I have some clarification. You just want to get some clarity for, from, from you guys. What is the actual date uh, that you need approval for this? What is the, you were just mentioning that there would be an immense impact, economic impact on, on you guys. So, uh, oh, when so Trump, yeah, so, uh, and, and then uh, after those couple of questions, oh, Open it up to board members to ask questions to from both sides to uh, to to ask questions. I know some of my board members already have their hands uh, uh, their hands up. There hasn't been clarity uh, for us on the on the timeline and exactly what the ask is. And looking at the documents today and how they were presented for Tom before uh, what we thought is was the option of the three point eight acres or the seven point four. It was clear from looking at it that what you guys are looking for is the 7.4 so we really need clarity of what your ask is in the deadline and then we'll discuss it so if, i'm going to open it up to some of our board members to start if that's well, okay with you hold on you want us to address some of those concerns before we move on to those so that we, we can handle that first it makes more sense before you open it up um, so we'll just kind of go through this one at a time, maybe so that we answer any additional questions as we go. One of your other questions was also that maybe the financial impact was that that the third thing. So I have financial impact deadline and what the actual ask is. Are those the three things you're looking for right now, Floor? Yes. Okay. So as far as the deadline. So the immediate deadline has to do with the Fox Run housing, and I believe it's February 1st. They will lose the lose the funding if they don't if we if they if the land isn't available. And so as of that February 1st deadline, I, I, there, there's probably more to it that I'm not aware of, but I can tell you that, that they've been given a $500,000 grant to rebuild or build the road into that area. And we need to have that commitment done as well by then. So essentially, if, if we don't move forward with this, uh, I can tell you that it's going to cost... I mean, it's a $500,000 grant to redo that road. Um, and that road, as we develop this project, part of the town center designation is that that road needs to be up to, uh, needs to be a town road. Um, so it'll have to be brought up to, to town specs um, one way or another. So, so we'll lose that $500,000 worth of grant money uh, to, to help do that with that, that road. Um, and then as far as the ask, or is there any additional 
uh, funding or financing or, I mean, when you look at it there, we're creating another developable lot essentially by having it that way. It looks like, uh, because we're going to be doing a 90 degree turn on the road, we're going to increase our, our, uh, we'll increase our taxes. I mean, we'll have another, another property that the residents can tax, um, that'll create income and in perpetuity to, to the town. I mean, so so the, the figures there depends on what gets developed there. But if it was a, a forty thousand dollar a year tax bill times whenever multiplied for however many years, I mean, you can't. I don't know. We can put a number on that, but it's tremendous. So so the the financial the financial impact to the town based on based on that could be huge. Um, any, any other? Financial. We, we estimated the complete build out would add about $125 million to the Berlin grand list. Uh, and, and though the, the, the school would obviously get tax dollars from the town, um, they, they won't get all of it because it goes into the, the state pool. But we've, we have been, this project would be increasing the state pool. So uh, I think, again, I think it's a, it's a, it's a win win. Um, uh, and the, uh, the, the, the actual property floor, the, from, from a, uh, from an ease of doing a subdivision, the stream makes the best sense, right? So that's 7.4 acres. I know there was conversation at the, uh, the school board meeting I attended about four months ago, you know, can we can the school uh, retain the wetlands piece of it? Yeah. The answer of that is yes. Uh, um, so uh, it, it really, from me, and from a, from from a, a, an ease of knowing where the property line is, to me the the stream makes sense. But again, if the school wanted to retain the wetlands piece of that. We we could we could figure out where that line is as well. So 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 when you're asking for a specific way, are you saying that your ability to make a decision as a board, we need to say we either want 3.8 acres or 7.4. We can't say that well, this is what we really essentially need, but we we would like any of that. I just want to be clear so that we don't have a hangout. Um, it's anywhere. What is what is what is your clarification needed for the specific ask? Does that clarify what you're looking for? That that clarify. Am I looking at other board members? Yes, that clarified. It was not clear uh, okay. before we had that conversation, and yeah, I'm going to open it up with board members, and I'm sure there will be more. Yeah, we'll go ahead and call on your board members and allow them to, to ask questions, and we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, join us. Hi, uh, my name is Jonas. I'm a board member from Worcester. Um, and I just want to, you know, acknowledge that there's kind of a palpable frustration from you guys about the way this is going and the time this is taking and the process that we're trying to go through. And I totally appreciate that. Um, I followed this project for years. A close work colleague of mine was on your planning commission for a while before he and his family needed to leave town. Um, um, and I think it's unfortunate that we're, you know, we don't want to be in this position of right. being the keystone for this. This is not our business, right? <laughs> this is our business. We, we don't want to have a veto over your project at all. And, you know, you don't need to convince us of the wisdom of the project. The only piece that we're, that I'll speak for myself, the only piece that I'm concerned with and it's clear that the town of Berlin supports the project, right? You've invested a ton of time and a ton of money. There have been a number of votes over the years about making this happen. It is this one specific piece of the plan, the transfer of land from the school district to the town. That is the only thing that I am concerned with. And I was, perf I was prepared to vote and support this until one of our valued board members from Berlin let us know that there was a significant amount of sentiment in Berlin that didn't feel great about this. And we heard a little bit about that tonight, right? We, I want to do right by Berlin. That is the only thing I want to do is do right by Berlin. 
I, I'm agnostic about your plans. I am agnostic about the wisdom of this. I'm happy, great to hear from the hospital and the housing folks about how great this is going to be. I, and I buy that 100%. The only thing I'm concerned about is the transfer of the land from the school to the town. And as far as I'm concerned, that's just a transfer from one municipality to another. And I would trust the town of Berlin to be good stewards of the land, right? And there are some things that I think that we want to make sure happen. You know, the, the, you know, the state of the wetlands, the security of the school property, you know, if that land gets sold in the future, I think the district would like the option of having it back, right? If the project for some reason yeah. falls apart or, yeah. you know, if the yeah. land gets sold. And those I think, things I think are totally reasonable. I have not heard a groundswell of opposition to this land transfer from the town of Berlin tonight. So I will support this. But I, I, I hope you guys know that, you know, the reason this has gone on is not because we are skeptical about the, or I'll speak for myself. The reason this has gone on so is not because I am skeptical about the plan. It's because I wanted to make sure that I was not going to vote to make a decision that the people of Berlin were going to resent us for. That is all. So I'm, yeah. ev everything I've heard tonight just confirms what I wanted to see and what I wanted to hear. I thank you guys for your time, and I'm happy to happy to be working with you making this happen moving forward. Thank you. Thank I you, Andy, and I do well, appreciate your, that. Your explanation. Thank but, you. <clears throat> Michaela. Um, I, I, I don't know. This might be a little redundant after Jonas's um, comments, but <laughs> um, I mean. I'm new to the board as of this summer. Um, the first I heard of this project was in September at the board meeting and subsequently at this meeting. Um, I guess I just wanted some clarification as to whether um, September was really the first time it was brought to the board or was it earlier in the process? Lindy's shaking her head. So earlier in the process, because I just it just feels uncomfortable as a board. That, like it seems like your fate is in our hands and that feels uncomfortable yes. and, you know for, for future planning you know if if the land is so important maybe <laughs> securing it earlier in the process would make it less uncomfortable um but but I second Jonas that you know I, I haven't heard anything tonight that makes me overly concerned about about the land exchange Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Any other questions from our board members? Board. Bob has this. Bob, I see your hand up. I was just going to let them go through with their board members briefly, if that's okay. Um, just because it was their moment to talk, and then we'll, we'll go. We'll get to you, Bob, if, if they can wait. Hey, floor. Yeah, Chris and Scott. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to defer to Scott first. Hey, Mr. Older. Gentleman, Chris, thank you. Yeah. Um, I just like to follow up what um, what Jonas said very well, and uh, you too, Michaelin. Um, from my perspective, as the school district board, our uh, our interest in this is really it goes no further than ensuring the safe and effective operation of our schools. Um, and maybe, you know, to ensure that there are no weird legal angles that we've missed and that might come back to bite us um, yeah. in the future. Uh, otherwise, as Peter Schober sort of intimated, if this were happening three years ago, um, this discussion actually wouldn't be happening because it would be a completely Berlin affair between the Berlin School Board and the Berlin Select Board. And I, as Jonas said, I, I think uh, we trust you to, uh, to know what your community needs. And uh, we, at least if I may speak for myself on this, um, it's kind of your land that uh, just through an accident of timing and administrative restructuring, we find ourselves, you know, um, the uh, the stewards of at present, but um, I mean, 
I think we just need to focus on our particular part, which is what is best for the school and leave the rest, leave the, the town planning to, to you, to those who are expert in that. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Chris? Yeah, thanks, Walt. Um, so I'm gonna push back on Scott a little because it's not Berlin land, it's school land. And we um, are in this position because of the merger, which most of us did not want. Um, so, you know, Scott's right that if it was a couple of years ago, it would just be a Berlin affair and not, not involve us, uh, but it does now. So, you know, we are the stewards to conserve school district assets, just as you are the stewards to advance Berlin's interests. Uh, with that uh, being said, I, I don't like that we're gifting because we're not really gifting. We're in a position where it's uh, somewhat, I don't say coerced, but there's a lot of pressure that this has to happen in order for the town um, project to go forward. So um, that's not actually a gift in my view, uh, but, I, but I think we're heading toward a transfer and I would support the 3.8 acre transfer, but with a provision that if it isn't used for municipal purposes, it comes back to the school district because then that's our stewardship. Uh, and if it can come back to the school district, then there's some type of fair market value negotiation that happens. But my preference would be the reversion, um, however it has been developed. So um, I would certainly support a 3.8 acre uh, transfer of this ownership um, and uh, wish Berlin the very best because I think this project will have a a rippling effect uh, throughout the Central Vermont area. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Thank you. Ursula? A couple of things earlier in the meeting, you mentioned having some form of approval from the previous Berlin school board. And I was curious, I am new to the board again, um, like McKaylin since August. And I was curious if anybody either on our board um, knows a history of that or anybody else has a history on that? Well, you guys want to speak to that as far as the history with the, the attorney? I'm not sure if you're referring to what I said earlier about the previous meeting or the previous discussions with the superintendent or the previous, or if there was something mentioned about the before the supervisor union took ownership. I'm not sure if, I, if you're referring to something I said or something that Justin oh, said. Yeah, actually. So, what was your what was your question? Can you clarify? Were you talking about prior to the administration change with the supervisory union that the attorneys uh, had said that this transfer could occur? I think that's oh, what, what, OK, what? then I, I may have misunderstood. It sounded like you said that you had had discussions with before the merger. The school so, board. So, so and before before the merger, um, when I was first on the select board, actually, the, the law firm that represented the supervisory union as well as the town attorney worked out of the same law firm. And I I saw this and, and talked with other members and, and it went to the Berlin school board prior um, because I, as you may be aware, part of the land that got transferred over to the supervisory union also houses our fire department, which I can't imagine you guys want to be the landlords for our fire department on your property either. Um, but my 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 question and concern was knowing down the road um, that that something like this would occur. The they that we had discussed doing some boundary line adjustments before this transfer, so this conversation wouldn't have even occurred. But because of the tremendous pressures and timelines due to the statutes that went into effect that essentially forced, forced the consolidation and merger. Uh, there wasn't any time to react to that. So it really didn't make it that far, but, but, but the, the general feeling from people that understood the development and the process that this project was going to, to, to take um, understood that this could be a potential uh frustration, let's say, or, or hurdle, or just something we all had to overcome because now, now we have obviously maybe some interested, but semi uninterested parties outside of the town, looking at it from a different perspective than maybe just the town's perspective. Um, so we just kind of thought that, that, yeah, it had been a topic of conversation, but hadn't, that's as far as it made it. Thank it you for the clarification. Thank and you. then 
I was wondering if we can hear from Aaron, the um, principal from Berlin. I know I've asked this before, but the trail usage, um, there are trails. I mean, I'm a former resident of Berlin and my child went to that school for a very brief time and we used those walking trails. How much of an impact would it be if you lost those trails and then how much of a security impact do you see? So I just, I want to interrupt and clarify real quick. I don't think there's not going to be any loss of usage on those trails. If anything, those trails would be enhanced. So, so the, 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 the usage of that land can never be developed by anybody. And it's, it's all purely outdoor recreation. I think one of the differences is if it's held by, by if, if uh, that we might get grant money, we might get people that'll invest more and work with the school or work with the town to, to enhance the ability, the walkability, the safety, whatever, the conservation of those trails. Um, so those trails aren't going to go away. So, I mean, maybe Aaron has something different to say, but from the town's perspective, the only thing that we see is, is better trails, uh, more, more of a buffer zone, maybe, I don't know, but it's definitely not those trails going away because they're such a vital and they've been in this community so long and people look forward to using them. And that's all part of what this downtown center is trying to do is accomplish a, a harmonious balance between those two. So I just want to throw that out there. Sorry for interrupting. Yes, sir. So I, I can go ahead. Um, hey, everyone. I'm Aaron Boynton, the principal at Berlin Elementary. Um, so I've been there for four years, and uh, it's an amazing school. I hope you're hearing great things. Um, just a wonderful place for kids, wonderful community, families, uh, staff. Um, so when I when I first heard about this, of course, as the principal, you know, my first thought was, okay, how might this impact any levels of safety? Because that's obviously first priority. Um, and uh, you know, kind of through this process, hearing that. Um, there wouldn't be any concerns around, you know, wandering people into onto the property, you know, things like that. Um, part of the property does have some fencing um, along the back, helps kind of just kind of keep keep some border to the to the property. Um, my first thought was, okay, I wonder what this would really kind of look like. Would it be recreational trails where people would be coming in and out of the property quite frequently? Um, and I was assured that that wasn't necessarily the, gonna gonna be the case. So I felt, you know, personally, uh, as the principal, a little bit better about about the project. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I absolutely, and I guess on behalf of the school, agree that, uh, uh, as our board has said, that this absolutely would enhance um, not, not only the, the community, but the uh, um, opportunities for kids, perhaps a boost in enrollment, um, um, uh, safe walking trails for uh, students to come to and from their, their, their home to school. Um, so absolutely, of course, uh, it would just be a really great plus to to the community and the school. Um, the the wooded area gets highly used. Uh, we do have outdoor education programs, um, and um, if you were to go down there now, you would see base camps set up. Um, you would see um, many different things that are happening down there. There are outdoor opportunities for kids. Um, it's used every week, at least once a week, at least once a week. Um, so there is a high volume of use down there. Um, so, you know, I, I would, I appreciate hearing that, you know, there could be potential enhancement to um, the, the area um, in terms of partnership um, because it is a highly used area for us. Um, so that's good to hear as well. Um, so those are kind of the two things that, again, just as the building principal had kind of run through my mind during this whole this whole process. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, Lindy? The trail discussion um, made me think about Berrytown, Berry City's consolidation, because I was working in that district at the time and Barry Town, who was pretty much against it, um, they did get their land into the town's hands instead of in the schools because they were worried about consolidation. It has not affected the school's usage for their outdoor education or their trails. Um, it's It really, I think, is just paperwork that it's now town land versus school land. And it's kind of a good example as we're talking about this if there's a fear involved, it's, I think our towns and our schools are so interconnected 
and continue to be, whether we're consolidated or not consolidated, they are our, our focus. And for a town like Berlin to now have a town center seems like a really nice, inviting thing for them to have. And it would be the housing part, I think, is tremendous. So I don't think the ownership of the land and the trails, there's, there will be a, a commitment towards safety and toward how it's used, I think. And that's what I saw in Barrie. Thank you, Lindy. Thank you. Thank you, Lindy. I don't, I don't see other board members' hands up. I can share what Vera sent me. It, you guys, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna read it. Mm. She, she had a question. I'm not sure why the town of Berlin spent grant funds towards a project that they couldn't commit to without the land swap. I know for sure for years that I spent on the Berlin school board, there was a pushback for many years to not do a land swap. And that was with the forever revolving board, meaning we had many different community board members on the board at different times. And there's many reasons why I feel the town of Berlin schools and districts, eh, even if the district doesn't exist anymore, shouldn't give it over or give the land to the town of Berlin. The biggest reason I don't want the land to end up in developers' hands and develop it for profit. So. I'm just reading what she yeah. sent to you. Yeah. And so, go on. Sorry. Was sorry, that it? I was just going to see if there's any other board members that want to, and then I, I also wanted to make a little statement just because I want to make sure that. So, so yeah. I think we, I want to address what, what, if you're done with what Vera's comments were, I'd like to address those just, just as if she had spoken out a little bit. Um, I think, I think, I, I think everybody in town can agree that, that if, if I, I, I can't remember who said it best or, or first, but I will say that if, if the land was going to be sold for profit, I think it, that would be a shame. Um, and so I can understand that. So so I think that, that that's kind of a non-factor. I don't think that anybody on this board would feel that way. I don't think anybody in this revolving board as, as time goes on would feel that way. And we'd be perfectly comfortable with the idea that, that if, if something were to happen uh, and it were not to be used for municipal purposes, we would take it up with either, you know, uh, some sort of monetary value or reversal back to the, the supervisory union. That's, that's absolutely the case. I do know that depending on who you talk to on the school board over those years, um, I was on the school board with Vera as well at one point in time. And, and there are, there are different perspectives, obviously from, from different community members. Um, I will say that the, the majority of the board that the, the school, when it was with the school board and just Berlin, it was town, it was already municipal property. Um, and, and so, but the town never had any intentions of doing anything other than what was in the best interest of the school. And that's, that, that's part of why it's left in their control. So I think, I think Vera, I hear what Vera said with everything. And I think that the town and the community would agree with, with that. Um, and the fact that I think some of it was not completely uh, understood from maybe participation in meetings and things. I, th I think that there was some clarity there along the way that may have gotten slightly confused, but I think, I think we're good now. I appreciate that. Go ahead, Flora, I'm done. Uh, that's okay. And any other board members? If, okay, I, I, I think mainly what I wanna say is that exactly what Jonas said before, we, you know, we, we wanna support the town of Berlin. Our interest was to hear from the town residents. We didn't wanna make a decision in isolation of the town residents. It, so this has been really informative to, to, to us. It, with my other hat as a, as a designer, I think supporting a town, a downtown development, it is really important. It's something that was lost when the interstate went. In, uh, in, in Berlin and it's a, it's a loss for the, for the community and it's something that is coming back around our different towns and it enhances education in edu uh, educational outcomes in my mind. It, we, we will now you know, uh, resume this conversation uh, as, as a board and also look at you know, those different questions that were, that, that were asked uh, on should the district consider some conditions on the transfer. And we'll get back, and we'll get back to you uh, in advance of the meeting on the on the nineteenth, uh, unless there's other questions. And I know you have one of your board members from the design review board with the questions that I want to hold Robert. Uh, yeah. 
Go ahead. Go ahead, Bob. <coughs> yes, I just wanted to say um, uh, regarding feedback from the town, I have lived in the town for 50 some odd years. Uh, both my children went to school at the elementary school. Uh, I've served the town as a selectman for four years, planning commission member for seven years, and DRB chair for the last 20 years. Uh, so people know who I am. Uh, I have not heard one person say that they oppose this kind of transaction. So uh, I, I, I'm not the only source, um, and, and who knows, they may not trust me, but um, <laughs> uh, because of my little bit, little bit outspoken, but but um, I, I do believe that people would reach out to me if they thought this was a bad idea, and they have not. Um, and I said I've lived here for fifty-five years now, um, probably more than most people here in this room. <laughs> um, so uh, I think this, I, I think I don't think this has any negative connotations to the town. Um, I think it's a positive thing, and I encourage the uh, the board to uh, consider this favorably. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Jonathan, I see your hands up. Then I have one more question before we adjourn, but go ahead. Four, was there anybody else? I nope. don't see anybody else. No. Nope. Okay. Um, so I'll just be very clear about how I feel about this project. I completely support the project, but completely oppose donating any of the school land for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can, can I ask why, Jonathan? Uh, well, there's a number of reasons why, but primarily I think it's important that there's a buffer between the school and any additional development. I mean, to be quite frank, going in and out of let's let's just hope that the road as it is going into the Berlin Mall now does not remain in that condition with this new development they'll put down new pavement and all that it's going to be a real realigned that's great um but no I, I just don't I don't think that that uh the housing aspect of uh, down street does amazing work the plan that I saw tonight without the school property would still allow that development to happen hey, that what? I do see it that I do. That I well. That I do support. It yeah. doesn't allow that to but happen, you're, you're, though, unfortunately. Okay. Well, so, let me so just. I'll just. I'll just reiterate again. I support the project a hundred percent, but completely oppose any of the school property going towards the project at all. So the project Thank won't you. happen. Excellent. Yeah. That's fine. It doesn't. It's fine. It, 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 it is what it is. It, the opinions are. I don't. I just. I don't. I don't think that that's. An ac I'm just trying accurate, to make it clear that the, the project can't exist without it. So it, it is what it is. I'm just trying to make clear that it, if one needs the other. So. Yeah, no, Andrew, right. Um, that makes sense. Is there, do you want to say something else? I'm sorry. I was just getting a little. No, I'm. I'm... You good? Um, I think what, what Carla and, and Justin are, are trying to say is, is that without this gift of land, likely the, the Berlin Town Center fails. There, there's no ands or ifs or buts about that. It, it, it will not happen. On, and Fox Run definitely won't happen. Absolutely right. So, so I just wanted a clarification. I'm not trying to sway you or change your opinion, Jonathan, in any way, shape, or form, but I just wanted to clarify that you, it, it, the support of the project Part of the support of the project, all of the project hinges on this. So, so I understand what you're saying, and I understand that's not going to change your vote. I understand that maybe as a result of needing the gift, you wouldn't support the overall project. Was your statement uh, to be clear? I don't know if that was it or not, but that's. I'll, I'll say yeah. I'm happy to I'm happy to say it again. I completely support the idea of a town center concept generally, and the way this proposal has been presented, but not including any of the school property. I hope that's clear. That's clear. Yeah. I, just want, I just want to see clarification. Jonas, I see you have your hand up. Can you go ahead? Yeah, yeah, man. I'm just not wild about the tenor and the tone here. We're discussing this with you in good faith. And you're, 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 you're interrupting us and like slapping the table. 
I, that's I, that, I mean, that's that's not great. That's not great. We're here as partners. There's, 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 hold on, you're interrupting me again. We, there are differing opinions. We don't want to be in this position. You got it. You please, please understand that. Please don't, please don't speak to our, our my fellow board members like that. I, for myself, in in complete respect of all of you, I, um, I was just trying to. Totally. Sorry. So I was just trying to point out that the two that to be in support of the project doesn't it, 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 the project won't happen if it without the land that's all i was trying to say i wasn't trying to be disrespectful and i apologize for any any disrespect i, I feel that I, I think everybody here is put in a tough position we've worked really hard and we have a lot a lot a lot of passion behind this and, and I, I ultimately think jonas like you said before there are differences in opinions but we also do do share one common thing and that's that's everybody's best interest so i, I agree i i apologize uh, for the role i may have played in it being offensive to you uh we certainly don't want to do that thank you that's well received i appreciate that thank you and thank you for bringing your concerns to our attention yeah, i appreciate absolutely. that as well i it appreciate makes for your open candor. communication thank that's, you that's how boards get things done <laughs> Thank you. So we we have a couple of questions. That I'm gonna open it up for Jen, just in process, so that we are sure about what our next steps are. In and yeah, sorry, sorry. go ahead, Jen. Yeah, I'm just. I think like McKaylin and Ursula, I'm relatively new to this whole process. I'm trying to get a handle on just timeline and the process. I know that this has been in the works and I know that we're committed to the best thing for our kids and for safety. What I am trying to understand is, um, I guess maybe similar to some of the questions, how did the design process get so far down the line without this conversation happening earlier? Like why, why is the board in a position right now that the process would be halted it just seems to me like um, I just don't understand that yet. So I that's just a great to question. Tom's going to answer that question. So, yeah. So in in August of 2020, I I met with Superintendent Brian and began these discussions. I uh, and he was aware of the town's desire for this gift of land. We wrote the school board a. Um, uh, a letter detailing uh, what our ask was in December of 2020. The, the, the school board uh, gave us in the March meeting, one of the March meeting, about 10 minutes to present this to, to them. Uh, and it was suggested that we hold a series of meetings at the property. We did that in the summer of 2020. Uh, and, and there was there was a, a continual promise that we would be on the um, school board agenda in the relatively near future. COVID hit. You lost your superintendent. And that's why we're at this position where we're at. I think there's some clarification. Oh, Scott, uh, I'll let you go first, and then. <laughs> Thanks, Fuller. <clears throat> I'm going to try to channel Kari here on um, on the process side, and just make a suggestion and see if it um, if it suits that we ask our lawyer to draft a uh, property transfer agreement that can then be brought to the board at our next meeting uh, for debate and decision so that we can see in black and white what the um, <clears throat> what the actual nub of the matter is and can discuss it and decide on that basis. Chris McVeigh. Um, I'm just fully in support of Scott's suggestion, um, particularly since there's a time deadline here. Um, but I would also suggest that if Berlin has a lawyer as well for this property transfer issue that the lawyers get together 
um, before our next board meeting so that, you know, the, I, I can imagine there'll be some debate about reversionary language and how many acres and things like that, but all the other stuff that might go into the document is clarified and agreed to by the two attorneys at least um, before it comes to us so that we don't lose time after our meeting and things aren't clear. But great suggestion, Scott. I mean, well, Kari. <laughs> um, my, my quick question would be that before this meeting is adjourned, um, the town of Berlin clearly has a town attorney uh, and we would need to know who, who we should be in communication with for the development of that. Um, so I don't know if, if, who, if the supervisory union will have a town attorney that they consistently use or, or if, if you have one in mind or how that works. But if you could clarify for the town, I think that would be useful. We will send information to Vince. We are working with Nick and we had in, in communication before. I think what I was trying to say with when I was going to say is like we will consider the conditions. So just like Scott and Chris just said right now, we'll con we there will have to be some back and forth before the meeting in the 19th so that we are prepared to present something to the board to uh, to make a decision on. I just also want to make one last comment and just to to acknowledge that, you know, the school and the staff and everybody is under a lot of stress. It, it feels like, you know, so it, it feels like a lot to put that on this on the on the school shoulders now right now. So I just want you to understand that our, you know, our, our willingness to to work to continue to work with with you and by no means we were trying to put you off. If, if for months it was clear that we needed more information from the town of Berlin because we asked the questions we visit, we, we wanted to put it in your residence. We did not want to make this decision in isolation from the town of Berlin. Well, I'm, I'm personally thankful for this meeting. Yeah. I'd be, I think that clarified and I appreciate everybody's time that participated. Tremendously. Thank you. We have another hand up. Uh, Maggie, you have. Thank you. Uh, I'm I'm yet the third new board member, so uh, uh, I want to um, just um, acknowledge Jonas's early comments that we're not coming from an adversarial place. We've been charged with making a decision. As a Callis resident, I don't live in Berlin. Um, I have had a general understanding that a town center was needed for Berlin and planned, but knew nothing about the specifics until the town manager and the attorney, Nick Lowe, came to speak with us. And, um, you know, we all just want to make the right decision for the larger community. So thank you for taking the time today. But please understand, we're not coming from an adversarial place here. We're being asked to do something that feels really difficult. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Floor, do you have anybody else that would like to speak? I, I don't see any hands up right now. So do you think do you think it would be beneficial for, for us to discuss, like, uh, so we understand where you're coming from, what you're just an actual, maybe a little bit of a timeline so that nobody's questioning or we don't leave things up in the air? Uh, you're you're going to have your attorneys, from what I understand, start drafting uh uh, some, some documentation for the potential transfer for discussion on the 19th. Is, is that the, the first goal here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then where does it, where does it go after that? Just so that the town understands and, and we we're clear. So you'll have your initial discussion. There'll obviously be some back and forth. Maybe, maybe, maybe you'll go stamp it. Love it. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe you won't, maybe it'll go back and forth a little bit, but, uh, I'm just curious what it looks like as we approach what the town has for a deadline um, and, and how we can support you and in, in, in making sure that we give you everything you need to be able to make the process happen or decision happen on your end. So, you know, the timeline is, is pretty, is pretty hard for us, uh, for us right now, because we would send the packet out on the 14th to our board members. So we are going to try to, uh, get this done while we're getting the board presentation for the budget done on the 12th too. So we, our hope is that we would get this, be able to get Nick right into work and use the, use 
the end of this week and next week to go back and forth uh, with uh, with you guys to be able to have something in the package for the board members to be able to read and be informed before our meeting on the on the 19th with the understanding that that meeting we would also be talking about budget and we also have to approve the budget so it would be it's so it, there's a lot going on <laughs> right yeah. now so so would it make sense for us to engage our attorney with nick in the process um, yeah, she's not you're right. And if Nick, if Nick can't take on the task to just engage our attorney to draft something up as well for discussion, um, if just for you guys as a starting point, I just want to make sure that we don't that that Nick is has a family event or something and is unavailable that it doesn't delay the process for weeks on end. Um, so if in the event that Nick's unavailable and our attorney communicates with Nick and 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 Nick doesn't isn't able to, to draft up documentation or anything for you to discuss on the 19th, would it be acceptable for them to decide uh, for our, our town attorney to look at something for you guys to look at as well? I just, you know what I mean? I, I'd prefer not to have it happen that way, but just at the I think we, I think just for a matter of process, we both need our attorneys and the two oh, attorneys will come to a common agreement on what to present to the board. So don't, don't worry about it. We, we will make it, we will make it happen. If they can't do it, we, we will have somebody else in that office jump into it or we okay. will call somebody else. But it is for, for better process, each of us needs their own attorney. Yeah, well, absolutely. Before the, before anything were to occur, but I just wanted to make sure things got started and we're, we're all well on their way. Um, and then, so, so on the 19th, you'll have a discussion, you will obviously about budget and multiple other items that'll take hours. Um, and then maybe a little bit of discussion on this potential transfer. And then when does the board meet again? Not until the first week of January as a, of uh, February, sorry, as a community forum, but we, we sometimes have business in there. So if needed, it would be that first week of, of February. So the first week of February, does that impact our deadlines with, with any of this? I mean, we talked February 1st as a, as a timeline. So is there. So wait, so the vote can't happen on the 19th? I guess I misunderstood that. That's what. I, okay. I'm not but, saying that the vote can't oh, happen. Okay. I think that's what we are. So no, I mean, just, we, can, we don't need to hold the entire board on, on this right now. Our intent is yeah. to try to make a decision on the 19th. Let's say okay. that both sides can't come to a mutual agreement by the 19th. Worst case scenario would be okay. on that on the first week of, of February, but you know, I, I the Thank outcome, you. I can't guarantee you what the outcome it's of is course not. Of course not. Right. No, we understand. Right. I just wanted to clarify every just so that we understood. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I and I I, I appreciate the position you're in and, and I I'm sure I did sound frustrated, but it's just because it's been a very long process and I don't mean to um, take that out on anybody on this call. Right. <laughs> but we, well, we appreciate that. <laughs> I, I think we're all set floor if you guys are um are you are you good on your end entertain I, I think we are i don't see any other i'm sure there's going to be questions but thank you for your time and thank you for making this meeting happen this meeting happen thank you, and, um, thank you. Continue, to continue to collaborate with you Bye. Thank, thank you all girl. so much thank you entertain, entertain a motion to adjourn so Somebody moved. just tried to talk. No, they're adjourning. Oh, so okay. moved. Have a good evening. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I don't get a vote. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you.